much for joining us. Omar is doing his session on COE, Center of Excellence. I'm pretty sure it's going to be great. And it, it's kind of cool because the sessions are, uh, we kind of try to organize it topics that were relevant in sequence. But I didn't think that the transition between, uh, you know, Chris to Raphael was going to be that perfect. And now yours, because I, I saw that um, Raphael touch, touched on the uh, starter package for COE. So that's good. That's good that it's working out that way. So uh, take, it, take it away, Omar. It's, it's all yours. Thank you, Victor. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so in this session, hopefully I'll try to manage everything that was built in the previous sessions uh, in, the, in the CUE toolkit. Uh, my name is Omar Zarur. Uh, I'm currently solution architect contracting with the Canada Energy Regulator, a uh, federal agency that takes care of regulating energy in Canada and exporting importing energy. Uh, I'm uh, working in the Power Platform field and Dynamics 365, plus I'm previously uh, a .NET developer and I also work with Azure development. So, uh, I, based on the previous sessions, this one will be like a break to everyone, but hopefully it's a, it's a good one. So, uh, if you are complaining about how fast things change with Microsoft technologies like me, uh, sometimes here is something that changes actually faster uh, the weather in Canada and um, just a fun fact from my home province of Alberta it, some decades ago there was a around 41 degrees change in a single day in the town of Pincher Creek not far away from where I live in Calgary uh, so uh, we are blessed actually in this region to have some warm wind coming our way in the freezing days and might be causing some headaches to others, to some other people, some people, but also gives us some hope that the harsh winter days will end. So the context switch now to the presentation topic. In, the, in this slow code time, if it is easy to create an app, then this implies that it is also easy to create a plethora of apps and components that are hard to manage and control. So if you reach this stage in your business where you are facing this problem and looking for a solution for it, it's nothing but a sign of success in my opinion. You have actually enough engagement from your users that now you are looking for a solution to manage them and what they built. So uh, the, the other goal is just to get you excited about this toolkit and what problem is trying to solve. And hopefully you will find it useful in your projects, especially the bigger organizations uh, where this, this problem may arise more than the smaller organizations. So for those new to the Power Platform, I will start by talking a little bit about the environments and the World Guardian analogy that I'm using. And I will outline the different priorities between makers and administrators. And then I will go into the, the pillars of excellence in this platform and why we need to uh, manage the platform properly. And also, um, we will talk about actually the main topic of this presentation, which is the, the Center of Excellence Toolkit, which I'll be saying COE from now on just to save some words. And F, we will go through the, the toolkit itself. It's a, it's a big toolkit, some demos, and we will end up with uh, hopefully some time for questions and answers. Again, for anyone new to the terminology here, um, the, there are two roles that I will be mentioning a lot in the presentation. The ad makers, this might be your, your current Microsoft Excel guru or someone with tendency to be handy and likes to solve problems themselves. Administrators, sometimes I call them IT administrators, sometimes I call them administrators in the presentation. Um, they care less about the details of what's being built, but they care more of the, or, about the or, organizational guidelines. The, these admins might also be makers in smaller organizations, but in general, they're not makers. 
they just administer the organization, the, the, the environments we have. So, if you are an administrator or a maker or a normal user, there is a high chance that you fall into one of these categories of personas. You either thinking about starting or you have just started using the platform or you are into it for some time. Regardless of who you are, there is a high chance that you will face the problems that this presentation is trying to solve. The solution we are going to present might not be the perfect fit for you, but it mostly will be a big part of the solution that you will have. So I like the metaphor of phrased garden beds here because the tech, in, at least in my mind, the tech we work with resembles this. So imagine this, if those raised gardens are your environments, this is what will happen if no one govern what users are building. By this, I mean there will be apps, flows, virtual agents, and other components that don't follow organization security guidelines, or they don't get updated regularly, or they just get orphaned because the maker who built them left the organization, or simply they're not needed anymore. Can you imagine how, how big of a nightmare this is for an IT administrator who really doesn't know what these apps are for, but she still receives support requests for them? What if an app fails? What should the app users do? What if a user want access to a specific app? What should the admin do? So the goal here is we want our environments to look something like this, a clean and tidy where makers innovate by building apps and administrators are still in control, even though they may not really know what those apps are for or how the details of how they are built. So achieving, achieving this state is not an easy task because it requires kind of another level of collaboration and automation. And our goal here is to make it easier to reach that level. So enough with the gardening metaphors. Let's actually think about how we can start and stay in a similar kind of clean environments. So in a common scenario, this is how your environments may look like. So the simple apps, non-critical apps will be in default environment, which uh, a good practice to rename it to personal productivity. And we have, we may have environments per departments, uh, like human resource environments, customer service environments. And the, the more common case actually is we will have a, a list of environments that where apps follow kind of a pipeline between dev QA and production, where there is critical application that you developed maybe for an, a department, maybe for the whole organization that go, goes through this pipeline. In, in general, you will have a small number of administrators, a little bit more makers and a lot more users that all of them, they work in these environments and we want to have as less obstacles as possible between the, these three personas basically. So we want administrators to work together with makers for optimal operations, but really they are not on the same page, especially in a bigger organization. Take the example of custom apps. IT actually is in, in more control than in Power Platform because normally it's easier to manage and control a handful of developers who are building these custom apps. But it clearly that IT administrators have their valid reasons on why things should be done in a certain way. But the IT administrators and makers, they have different goals in mind where makers and users like to build things and innovate, uh, where IT likes to uh, govern what they build. So in general, makers want to build and be nurtured with as much less IT, sorry, with, with less IT interaction and approval processes while IT wants to govern, set guardrails, automate common requests, and keep consistent practices followed. This difference in priorities, in my opinion, is very healthy, but again, it needs to be managed, and this toolkit will help us manage that. So to bridge those conflicting priorities between makers and administrators, we need to set our eyes on the, these excellence pillars. The term center of excellence is describes kind of a group of functions that coordinates between the different players of the platform. 
it standardizes the processes and eventually drives innovation and improvements by makers. So we need to administer the platform, secure it and monitor it and set guardrails for makers. And we need to act based on insights. It's not like the, the administrators, they don't know at a single uh, like specific point of time what's happening. They need kind of uh, uh, like a dashboard or a report that shows them uh, over a longer period of time what's happening in these in their environments. Okay, but and in addition to um, that, makers they want to be nurtured and trained to build and improve their apps. Also, we have the the main uh, pillar of support and operations. So how end users will, if they, if they face a problem in their apps, what will they do? They will send their request ticket, or they will request a, a solution from the administrators, but how is that process done? Uh, take an example of, uh, uh, like for example, a, a power app that you build, it's a critical app, a maker built it like a few months ago and it's shared with the all organizations. Let's say it's a timesheet app, for example. It is critical because it collects. It is important to uh, for the to collect the timesheets of the users. Now, if this app fails, users they the first thing they will think about is to contact the IT department and ask for like maybe why I can't log into this app or why this app is down. Uh, the the fourth thing is the operations. So imagine as an organization we where you have a lot of potential makers. You know, they want to just experiment with the with the power platform. They ask for you an environment. They may send an email to an IT administrator telling them, you know, I, I need an environment uh, for a two months period, a trial environment that I can play with and uh, train basically. So in, uh, instead of doing that, where the admin will miss a lot of emails, why not we just make a Canvas app where they submit the request and there is a flow on the back end that runs and creates the environment. We will see how this will be achieved in, uh, in later slides and demos. So hopefully we agree that establishing these pillars in the Power Platform is a good idea. So now let's take a look at some of the options we have to achieve that. So the, the first option we have, which is basically use the out-of-the-box administration centers, okay? So they are easy to use. They provide you with a lot of capability to do uh, environment management, security management, DLP management, uh, stands for data loss prevention policies, basically, data integration, and actually you can see some analytics there. But the problem with the out-of-the-box administration centers is that, first of all, it's kind of manual, like an administrator actually needs to go and click on some buttons to, to achieve something. Plus the, the, the data or analytics data stored currently at this time is for just 28 days. So after 28 days, uh, whatever was stored in the analytics of the platform management will be gone. And uh, you can't basically draw insights from those analytics. Option number two is the platform extensions. We have four main connectors that Microsoft provide to us that actually they call them the admin connectors and they provide lots of actions. I'll just go one slide here. So we have those connectors and the actions they provide. They cover a lot of what the administration centers actually use, the APIs behind the administration centers. So we have actions we can take as an, as administrators for power platform as as a whole like create a database create an environment or delete an environment there is a set of actions we can take as administrators of power apps like get connections for admin or get apps for admin plus there is a flow of power automate management connector that we have like around 20 actions we can make we can create the flow actually using a connector or delete it or get the users that this flow is shared with plus we have an administration connector for makers 
like get me all the apps that belong to me or get me the, the, the users who I shared this app with. So those, um, those connectors actually open a lot of possibilities for us to, to manage and automate uh, a lot of asks from users, uh, all in just using Canvas apps and model driven apps. Third option is templates and customization. So what Microsoft did, it's just one thing I forgot to mention. This toolkit is, is an open source toolkit. So some people from Microsoft work on it and also from the community. So it's not something that uh, basically it's not a product from Microsoft, but it is a product built on the extensions from Microsoft. So um, the, the Microsoft went and studied a lot of small and medium and big companies and they they kind of templatized their common processes and uh, common administration tasks into a set of solutions and customizations flows and canvas apps and model driven apps and custom connectors they put them all one in in one package and they call it the center of excellence toolkit so this is what we are actually going to talk about is this these templates that this kit provides to us. So the, the toolkit is composed of a set of solutions that you can import into an environment. The base layer uh, is called the co core components. It's actually mostly an administra for administrators. This, this layer is the most important one, of course, because it's based for all of them, and only administrators care about this layer. On top of that, if you remember the pillars we talked about, there is governance and nurturing and auditing. All of those are layers that basically built on top of this core components layer. There is a kind of an orphaned layer uh, called theming components. It can live on its own, even you can import it without the whole toolkit. Uh, we will talk about it also on the demo. So the Let's actually look at the Center of Excellence Toolkit uh, and the amount of components it provides. Actually, I'm not a very sophisticated person. It is actually a very big picture here uh, that while I was doing the presentation, Nicholas Kerman, thank you. Actually, I just want to first thank him. Nicholas Kerman, he's an evangelist from Microsoft who prepared this and shared this uh, this. Uh, image uh, that contains all the components of the COE toolkit. I was doing my own slides, but once I saw that in the middle of preparing the presentation, I removed all of them and just left this slide because it actually, it's much better to look at the, the toolkit here and see how the components interact with each other uh, than seeing them in, in separate slides. So as you can see, there is tens of moving pieces that make up this toolkit and Let's just break them up and show a demo, demo of each chunk of them. Hopefully we try to see as much as we can. Maybe not all of them, but we will try to just go most of them. Uh, okay. If you, like, I don't know if you used this kit before, you might see that there are miss some missing things, like there are some apps and components that got deprecated. I'm using the the latest version of this toolkit based on their GitHub currently. So whatever you see here is whatever is available in the latest version. Okay, so we will talk about the core components of the Center of Excellence toolkit. Core components, first of all, are for administrators, okay? And they are responsible for the synchronization of whatever resources you have in your environments, not only like all the environments in your tenant, into entities. Okay, so let's start with entities. They create uh, like around 20 entities, one called environment, power apps, app, and flow, flow action detail, etc. Those entities will store the, the resources information in your environments. So why do we need that? Like, let's say, like you can't go to, for example, Power BI and say, I want, give me all the apps in that, in, in the environment X, for example. You can't do that because 
Power PI expects that it will read from an entity, right? But the apps in the app information doesn't live in at least in a visible entity for us to use or to query. So the first thing they do is they create these entities and the, they have uh, many work, many flows that some of them actually run on a schedule. Some of them they run on based on side effects, basically that take the resources information and put them in those entities. OK, now to view those uh, to view this information, they provide us with a power platform admin view. It's a model driven app plus a power PI report, uh, a really cool one complex a little bit. It has a lot of things. We will go over it. Plus a couple of apps for the kind of most common uh, thing that administrators will do for users, which is basically just setting permissions uh, for flow and an app. So I will go to the environment and show these core apps in action, core app components in action. So I will just stop here and show the environment first like let's start with uh, with one important thing here is center of excellence toolkit is a set of solutions so the first thing you need to uh, make sure of is it needs its own environment the reason is currently it it, it is simple it's actually not simple but simple enough to for us for now but maybe in the future you will add more apps to it and flows and th you don't want to mix these administration apps with with normal apps that live in other environments plus if you like if your re uh, requirements are simple you may be enough with just one environment but actually if you are customizing this toolkit which most probably will do you you will do it because it doesn't fit all needs. You need to customize things to fit your own needs. You need to have a COE production environment where you move actually solutions from here to uh, to production. Currently, I just have the dev environments because I don't basically it's not it's out of scope of this presentation to to move things between environments. So I have an environment just made specifically for COE. Plus, I have two dummy production environments, one I call customer service, one HR. I just want to show that how this COE basically brings the resources from those other two environments. In addition to that, I have, if you can see here, I have my Chrome open here as an administrator. I am a global administrator here. Plus, I have my Edge open as an application maker. So I call it App Maker 2. Okay. So just because I want to show you how like things move around between the environments. So if I go to the solutions, you will see actually there is a solution called uh, Center of Excellence uh, Core Components. OK, and if we open this solution. You will see that it has a lot of flows and a lot of entities. The ones we talked about, the, the, the ones that will store the information about the resources in the, in the environments. OK. The, the father of all of these flows is this. It's called admin sync templates v2. And what this flow does basically is. Uh, when it executes, it updates some fields in the environment entity, the one they added to the toolkit, and this will kind of trigger trigger like a butterfly effect where all these sync flows will run based on this after this uh, flow finishes. So this is the first one is based on a schedule that runs like every at midnight every night every day and those basically they will run after as a result of this first one. So I, I will show this in action just before that I will show the the model driven app that comes with this toolkit. OK, so this model driven app has the entities plus some of them are not in the site map, so you may need to add them if you want. But are those the most important ones? This basically has a dashboard of some uh, um, visuals here. But those are the apps I have actually in my environments. You can see these three apps are in customer service environment. 
this in HR, the rest in the COE, which are the, the actually the apps that ship with the, the toolkit. Okay. Same with for flows, same with environments, because the administrative administrative connectors that we talked about actually they are capable of getting all this information, this information from our uh, tenant, which is includes the environments. Plus other things that I'm not going to go through today because everything everything here is similar, like chatbots, UI flows, and uh, connectors, like. Um, whatever connectors, whatever chatbots you have, it will be here, basically. Plus, also it brings a list of makers and a list of Power Platform users. Currently, I don't. this is a trial environment. I don't have a lot of users and makers and everything. I have a couple of makers and myself as an administrator, basically. Okay, so we, we saw this app. We have here around 28 apps uh, in, in, in the four, three environments that I showed you. So let's assume that this maker creates an app. Okay, so I will create an app quickly from a template. <clears throat> and I will create the, like phone layout from common data service. And uh, I will choose the contact entity, use the default app here. So I'll use contact, connect. I will have a simple app that adds, removes, and edit contacts from the in the customer service environment. Okay, so I'll just save it. I'll call this customer management, maybe. And I'll just save it. So, in a few seconds, we should be able to see the app here. Now, the let's go back as administrators now to the Chrome session. You will see that there is nothing here. There's still 28 apps. That app did not come over here. The reason is the, the flow that is responsible for triggering the synchronization runs every night, so we have to go and actually trigger it. Just fast forward time and uh, run it on a manual. Okay, so it's running. Doesn't take long because it's actually this one is not doing the synchronization as we said. It is actually just triggering all other flows to run. Okay, so it succeeded. So. Other flows now are running, so we are expecting that in a few seconds. Uh, oh, actually, it's now 29. So we have the customer management app that we that App Maker 2 created is in the records, so we can see uh, many details about it here. So we will we will basically uh, explain this process, business process flow later um, in the governance section. So we have. Uh, this uh, we, we we talked about the flows. We talked about the administrative, uh, like model-driven app that administrators use. And it's it's worth mentioning that because the core components are kind of for administrators only, you just need to share this app with the administrators in your organization, not the users, not the makers. No one needs to basically worry about what this app is doing or. No worry about seeing it actually in their list of apps. In addition as to, to what we mentioned, we have uh, set app permission and set flow permissions. Also, you need to share these two apps with your administrators because no one else should be doing this. Okay, so let's say I, I open the set app permissions and I say the um, customer service, customer management, the ones we just created. I want to give App Maker 1 a, a, an honor, maybe because App Maker 2 just left the organization. I want to make App Maker 1 uh, the owner of this. Okay, so uh, now App Maker 1, I don't have a session open for him. We'll, we'll have the, basically will own that application. So you can come just see here who are the, like 
the owners in my tenant, uh, there is this issue with my photo in this trial, so it's not an important error for now. Uh, so as you can see, we can see all the apps, all the flows. If we go to the other uh, Canvas app, to, and we can do the same, except like for, as you know, flows that you can't allow, you can't change ownership of flows. You can change, you can make someone viewer or editor of flow or user of a flow or an editor, but not an owner. But again, it's same, same logic. So uh, the core components has one more important uh, non-solution aware kind of component, which is the, this, complex Power BI uh, report that or that they sh that it ships with the with the toolkit. So this has I already published it into my trial. Yeah, sorry. So you, you can see that the monitor side is for administrators. You can go and check the tenant overview and all of this data is based on the entities that we just synchronized in the in for the administrators. If, if you have a distribution over multiple continents, you can see them on the map. Um, plus, you can see what are the apps here. And I will actually come back to this dashboard after uh, because it, like, for, for monitoring, yeah, you can see what apps, what flows, what custom connectors are in my environments and how my environments distribution between flows and apps and stuff, uh, and who are the makers in my environments. But actually, it will get more interesting when we when we go to the governance side of things. OK, so we're almost done. There is a lot of actual other components. If time permits, I will come back to them like cleanup. Like uh, there is, you know, there is some cleanup flows that, uh, you know, if the maker leaves, this flow will run and mark that app as an orphan. So uh, you know in the dashboard that this is an orphan app. It needs a new owner. You go use the other Canvas app we showed, which is set app permission to assign another owner for that app. So there are like many things. Uh, hopefully we will get back to them, but we have a lot of things to cover now to to cover. OK, so these are the core components of uh, the Center of Excellence toolkits for administrators only. So let's actually now go to the second one, which is the governance. Two main processes, uh, sample processes, if you wish you can call them, that ship with this toolkit. One for archiving and one for auditing. Okay, archiving is, you know, if, if an app is not used uh, by users or if an app, uh, you know, it, it, it has a demo word in the title or a sample or a test, it, it is it has like, it might be a, a candidate for approval uh, for archiving. So what we what we have here is we have a SharePoint site that will uh, basically store the archived app, the MS a uh, the MS app uh, extension of the exported app basically. So that if we like if we need it later, we can bring it back. We have flows for apps and. Uh, we have Power Automate flows for for Canvas apps and for flows uh, that will send an approval request to uh, the owners of these apps and ask them, you know, we, f we think that your app is a candidate for archiving. Do you agree or not? Yes. If they say yes, the app that says app archive check is will basically do the 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 needed steps to archive that application. OK, one thing worth mentioning is that everything here is controlled with using environment variables. So actually, I I, the, I put them in an unmanaged solution called CO customizations. There is a lot of uh, environment variables that you, that you can control here. Like, for example, auto delete on archive. Do you want the app deleted from the environment when you archive it or you just keep it? So you can specify things here. Default is no, so we will go through it now. So let's actually uh, look at an archiving pro uh, archiving process here. So let's go to the second uh, solution, which is governance components. And the ha we have mirrored flows, like we have a flow for app, same flow 
for flows resources. Okay, so let's uh, let's go with the app archive and cleanup start approval. It is customizable. Initially, it comes like every this one it checks for apps that haven't been run in a month or something. But I make it I made it for a single day so that we get emails uh, running into uh, into our inboxes. So what this will do is we'll go check some criteria like uh, is the app uh, not published like uh, when was the last time you the owner published the app if it's more than six or three months it means you know this app might be a candidate for archive so uh, there is multiple criteria that you can customize in your logic that basically will decide if an app needs archiving or archiving or not so this basically uh, still running, but I think I got some emails. Um, maybe here. Yeah, your, your app announcement has been, I have an app called announcements has been flagged for archiving. So if I say approve, okay, and I put a comment or something, nothing happens because the there is another flow that also runs at night and goes and check if there is anyone who said yes. So if there is anyone who said yes, it will basically. Uh, oh, not this one. Sorry. You will see like my under my actions, there is approval. All these approvals that. Sorry, that were sent to to users for their apps, and you see a lot of them because I specified the time as one day instead of three months. So it's almost sent for all of my applications here. So when 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 it gets approved, there is a, another uh, flow that will run and check approvals. OK, so if we run, run this flow, it will go check that the ones that said yes. Should be this one will, will take time to export the app and put it in SharePoint and stuff. Hopefully it works, but basically it will it will take an export of the app into. Uh, let's just check here. Uh, Power apps archive. You see announcement is archived now because the environment variable say no, don't delete it from the environment. It will you will the announcement app will still be in the environments, but it won't be deleted now just to to. Uh, I will come to the port, the, the port BI dashboard because I still have more important things to show. The second piece of the uh, the our governance is the auditing process. So I develop an app as an app maker, but my app doesn't follow the compliance guidelines set by my administ by administrators. Okay, so there is a flow that co is called compliance detail request that will send a, an email telling you, you know, your app is not compliant. So just for the sake of time, let's go here and in Teams and inside the, I, I created a team called uh, Makers, so where Makers collaborate here. And actually this team, it has an object ID, you can get it from Azure Active Directory, you can specify it in one of the environment variables uh, so that any new maker will be automatically added to this team. So developer compliance center is a model driven uh, is a canvas app that ships with the governance solution. OK, so I created an app called customer management, but when I open this uh, 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 this application developer compliance center, it says, you know, you have two apps and they are both in red state because they are not compliant. And what does a compliant mean? Compliant means that first, first of all, of course, this is the criteria that ships with the with with the toolkit. You need to have a description. You need to publish it. It's published already. You need to submit a support detail. Why? Because if we receive a support requests from users, we need to know how to support them, right? As administrators. So. Uh, so that you can say oh, here this app is important and just for 
customer service department. Okay. Um, access management. All users can have access, but you can say, you know, only uh, customer uh, service users uh, can have access. And you say dependencies. Is it dependent on SharePoint or dependent on some APIs or something? So the administrators, they need to know. Let's say this one not available. What's the business impact? You can specify that this is confidential. And do you have a mitigation plan? Yes. What if this app goes offline? So as an, a maker, I want to make sure that the the administrators know the maybe there is an Excel sheet they need to fill in their records until this app comes online again. Okay. So I will submit, but still I will be in the red or yellow uh, because I haven't updated the description. Okay. I'm in the yellow now because there is no description. So what I need to do, I need to go to my app and uh, this app is for uh, X and Y. Okay, you just put a description and save. Okay. And publish. Still, when you do this, nothing will happen like I can refresh and it will still be in the in the orange state because it's not uh, basically the description needs to be synced first again using our syncing flows. If you go here, you will just uh, fast forward and run this flow that runs at night and it will bring that description we got hopefully in a few seconds and it will actually show it in here. Let's just while we're doing this. I don't think it's that fast, so we will wait until the description because this app is not reading from your resources in the environment. It's all reading from the entities in the core components. So we need to, for this. We need to wait for the syncing flows to to finish. OK. While it's doing that, let's actually go. Uh, OK, that's yeah, there is one model driven app. I don't see any need for this app is basically for app archives. It has just one entity in it. What you can do and actually they recommend is you move this entity, put it in the admin view app and just remove this app. You don't need it anymore because one app for administrators instead of two is of course much is, is better, right? So we covered the governance processes that chip. You may have more governance processes in your business that you need to implement, but those are the ones that ship actually with the product. You can see that makers are in the middle of everything here. They they need to be nurtured, governed. They they need to be consistent with themes, but they don't care a lot about core, the core layer of things. Okay, so let's move to nurturing. Nurturing also has uh, two things. We have training. You how you want to train your users and makers, and we have uh, sharing best practices uh, using some apps and flows. So the first thing, I will go quick here. Uh, we have is we have two apps. One called Training in a Day Registration and Training in a Day Management. You share the management with your event guys or here the one who are responsible for the events uh, to create the events or maybe your administrators or maybe your makers if the if your makers are doing the training themselves and there is a, a training in a day registration where you need to share this app with everyone in the organization so that they can see what events are there so let's create uh, a quick a quick basically event for today and maximum attendees 22 and location teams and you can put a description okay so as a maker or as a, a user i will be able to see this app i embedded most of the apps in teams just for the sake of like it's easier for them and in re actually in real business life in, re in real life it's easier to embed all these apps in teams for them to use. So I have, I, I can see a map, a Maple Power uh, event. I just say, okay, I want to register for this workshop and I'm registered. And in a few seconds, I will receive an email using one of the flows in that ship with the, with the, with the toolkit that will send me a welcome email 
kind of thank you for registering in a moment. OK, and there is another flow that will send me a reminder three days before the event ends, it starts, and there is a third flow that will send me thank you after actually uh, attending the event with a link with, to a form uh, like a survey to just rate the events. So those, those are the three flows I was talking about. So there is a feedback reminder and registration confirmation and the reminder three, those, three days prior to the event. OK, so while uh, before continuing in the nurturing, let's actually go into the compliance just to make sure that our app is now in a good state. It's green here because the description now is carried over. Now, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm mixing things up, but there is I, I'm just looking at the, at the time as well. So I want to make sure that I cover as much as I can. So we talked about nurturing. We talked about uh, event management, right? So how can we create events? How can we register for events? In addition to the nurturing, you will see that we have an app catalog and let's go to the apps actually. We have an app catalog and a template catalog where the nice apps, the powerful apps, the critical apps, whatever you want to call them, you can put them in, in an app catalog that you can share with the whole organization. So for like easy discovery of the discoverability of the apps, so that they can just launch it from here without go them going into each environment looking for the apps they, they want. OK, and how they come into the app catalog and the, how they become featured here. You, re, you remember the original admin view app here. We if you go to app and you say admin review that customer management because we just submitted a, a, a support request for it this persistent process flow becomes active so yes i provided as a maker the business requirements it is an important app and it is maybe a moderate risk because it's related to customers so you can say here the category of its collaboration, let's say, and yes, I want it in the app catalog. Yes, I want it featured. OK, this is how an app gets into the app catalog. So the administrators will control which apps will be in the app catalog that will be shared with the whole organization. OK, so template catalog is is a mix of things. There is a SharePoint site behind the scenes that will feed this template catalog. There is a, a library document library that basically you can do both documents, links, app templates, whatever you want, you can put them in that SharePoint site, which I call uh, uh, app templates here. You can put these records, give them some metadata, and once you put them here, they will appear in your uh, template catalog. Let's say you want to share a best practice on how to build your Canvas app using Excel. You can put a document, maybe a PDF, and put it there in the SharePoint site, and it, it will be visible to everyone who can download it, basically. So you share your templates, your best practices in this app. OK, so in addition to that, uh, there is one more thing for the nurturing component. I think I'm not going to cover even like 70% of this toolkit. There is a lot of things. So there is one more thing for the nurturing component is a welcome email and the newsletter with product updates. Those two flows, every time a new maker record gets created in the admin view model driven app, they will receive a welcome email plus they will be added to whatever group we specified. In our case, I specified a team called Makers, Makers team, but you can specify a Yammer group if you want. Uh, that it will, this flow will automatically add your new maker to it. Okay. And this product updates, it's a weekly flow that will read the RSS feeds from uh, the most important power platform uh, blogs and send them in a nice email to your makers and users or to make to your makers actually okay so let's actually look now at 
the uh, theming component. So if you just remember here, we have a theming component uh, where you, if you want to drive consistency in your organization, you want uh, consistent apps, consistent, consistent looking apps. Okay, so we have two main, sorry. So we have two main Canvas apps for you. We have one called the COE, COE Theme Editor. You share this with your designers or makers. We have COE Theme Gallery. Also, you share this with your users and makers. Okay. So what's a theme editor? If you open it, you will see that I created an app called Maple Theme yeah, and a theme called Maple Theme. I want to. I will create a new theme here. I will call it. Just a second. Theme is basically a set of styles and colors and everything like that, right? So I will call this a blue theme, okay? And the main is the main color is. Blue and white, let's say. Okay. Okay. So I have, have this blue theme, and it, it's kind of white and blue. Uh, when I say settings, I can publish this theme directly. But before I do that, actually, I I can upload a template to that uses this theme, and I will share that template in the template catalog or in the CEO theme gallery. So let, let's have a look here. So we the, the COE ships with two empty templates, one called app template form and app template tablet. So let's open this. Okay, and copy this line because on the app start of that template, we want to, oh, sorry, not open it, edit it. We want to tell this template that you are using this theme, okay, which is the blue and white. What we need to do is we we need to go go to the app set start here and we just paste the oh actually the previous one I called it blue theme as well so it's, so we we need to do this and save uh, you can see that if I execute actually the on start and I add uh, a button to it it will have this blue like. Uh, Maybe I chose the wrong colors. There is a third color I have to choose for the fill color of this. But you can see that it is actually respecting the colors I chose for that theme. So what you need to do, save it as an MS app. Uh, save. Oh, not sorry, not to the cloud. Save it to your computer because I want the like the the file itself. Save as. Download. And I get the MS app uh, file file with the MS app extension. Then I can go to the theme that I was creating. No, oh, it's this is loading settings. Please work. Yeah. So here you can specify those templates that use basically your uh, themed template basically you, you can upload your theme template here and say complete yeah now we have two themes and if you go to the gallery which is shared with everyone they can see that you know we have two themes and this blue theme has a template that has an ms app that you can download and open in as a like when you create a new app you can use this theme to control the styles of your new app okay so uh, those are the main two theming the two main theming components there is one third one called shared component library which i'm not going to go through today because like uh, this like if you develop components, not Canvas apps, you can share them to with users using this Canvas app, basically. And of course, you need to share this app with whoever, with whoever wants to build apps. The last important thing I want to cover now uh, is auditing. So 
if you are aware of Office 365, there is a unified auditing log. If your if your tenant is enabled for unified auditing, you will see a lot of actions that actually happen that Office 365 record for you. OK, and those actions like someone launched an app, someone deleted an app, someone's edited, edited an app or something. All of these are recorded with their timestamps. So you can actually there is a flow that ships with the toolkit that you can run. It will take time, so I will sh this one you can run and it will bring those Office 365 audit logs into your uh, admin view model driven app. OK, so you will see that, you know, user X launched an app Y on this time. The reason is you can see all of this information in the the the, the Power BI dashboard. So let's take one more look here. Uh, we can look at the apps, for example, and you will see that because we are getting the audits and stuff from Office 365, we have 28 sessions for this app. We got it from Office 365. We have two unique. No, this one actually is we got it from normal COE. So this sessions, for example, we get it from the audit log. OK, last launched. When, how do we get that from the audit log? OK, so if we go to the just introduction piece of this Power, Power BI, you will see that there is some for monitor, some for govern and some for nurturing. And you will see who, like who are my app gurus? Who are the the makers who are using uh, the most complex connector? Because those are the makers who are actually doing a lot of work. Uh, who maybe we need to nurture more or make them trainers for the other users. OK, so you can look at all of this information in the in the report. One nice thing I just want to show, which applies to flows and connectors as well, is the app risk assessment. You will have, let's say, uh, the this notes app. OK, when you hover over it, it will give you what's the archive score of this app. It's zero now. But the archive score is a calculated number that basically it's a sum of is this updated recently or is this app contains like some non production words or is it built from a template or how long this app or when was this app last ran? So all of these they calculate them in the archive score. Let's assume that this notes app or maybe this announcement app. OK, this notes app is we want to archive it. We just drill through into an embedded canvas app inside the Power BI dashboard that actually you can take actions just not not only read only but you can take actions on the apps from here you can email the maker hey do you want to uh, explain to me like uh, this and that why this is behaving this way or you can actually go and archive it from here or delete it completely okay so we can go and archive the app i think we will have Archive, archive twice the same app. But the point is this. Uh, like a big door PI report is basically not only for viewing things, it's also for taking some actions on the apps and flows. As you can see as well in the and this is Power BI desktop, there is many. Uh, like many that are hidden, like if I'm not using virtual agents, I just hide this sheet or this tab. Uh, from the Power BI and publish it. So you can customize this report basically to show only the things you need. As you grow and you develop the COE more and more, add more things, you can just show uh, basically more uh, visuals on the on the report. Thank you so much. Uh, I know that uh, almost like two minutes, I will leave them for Q&A. And if there is any questions, uh please please reach out to me for any question about this uh, i was planning actually to do some part of the installation but i said no when i was installing it because it actually took a long time like took like three or four hours to install and there is no time to install it in front view here but it's good that i maybe covered like 70 percent of what the toolkit has actually component wise thank you now this is this is great Oma. It is it is a huge load, maybe a two hour session or uh, we'll, we'll see what we do. Maybe a whole Saturday on COE. Somebody talked about it the other day um, to do a, a Saturday on, on Center of Excellence. There's just a lot there. Um, there were some questions, Omar. Um, someone asked 
if you can change owners uh, for flows via COE. And then the other thing was if there are any licensing uh, costs. Yeah, for so I actually didn't go through licensing because it's also another session for this. Like it depends what you use. If you use the like, of course, you need the CDS database for the environment. So you go with like there is a prerequisite section on the uh, this is my source for the whole thing. This covers everything I, I demoed plus a lot of other things. OK, so okay. there is the you you for administrators, you need kind of more uh, uh, like licenses per, per user. But for mm -hmm. users for like you need the per app. Uh, licenses. Of course, it depends how many apps actually they are using. How, like, if you want to share all these apps with the users, you need mm -hmm. like the per app premium license, a per user premium license. But it's all basically mentioned here prerequisites, like what type of administrators roles you need or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. for the flow owner, I'm not aware. They basically specify that the sit flow permission is only for. Uh, editors and viewers, not owners. Okay. Um, somebody also asked if you can, uh, maybe after the session, share the uh, COE uh, diagram. Yes, I actually I got permission from uh, Nicholas to share the Im the image. I will just put it in the chat after that. Awesome. That's good. Thanks, Omar. Everybody, I'm gonna share Omar's contact uh, once again in the in the chat window. Connect with him. If you have questions, you can post them here or engage with him directly. Uh, thank you so much for making the thank time, you, Omar. Everyone. Thanks, I'll, Victor. I'll see you around the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, bro. Thanks. All right. Next in line, we got uh, Igor. Igor, are you here with us?